Look at that. Waiting right up front for us. How you doing, man? How you doing? Good to see you. What's up, dude? Hey, good? Yeah, so I got a surprise for you. Yeah? Where can we go talk? Uh, let's go to conference room. All right. All right, man. Yeah, so go. it's going to be different, but I, it's hard to stand out in the OBS world. But okay. I printed out a bunch of different stuff. We've got some card stock. We've got some regular stock. But uh, okay. this is probably the most appealing to you. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, yeah. What is that? Like 16 inches of tire? Yeah, those are 405s. That's crazy. Dude. Yeah, I like the exhaust too. And the diffuser. That's nice. Kind of center exhaust, C8 ish. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I want to make sure this thing has killer power. We need Absolutely. to be able to burn those. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it's a lot of meat on the ground. And yeah. uh, I'll let you and Josh talk the the technicalities of it now because. Uh, I've given my elevator pitch of how badass this OBS is going to be. So we already decided like it's going to be LS based. We wanted to throw some kind of boost at it. So we've already had a transmission built. We've got a, I mean, okay. full billet internal turbo 400. Yeah. Uh, Quick performance has built us just this massive rear end that has sled pulling axles. Oh, I mean, okay. it's, it's just a monster. So we need the engine to, you know, complete the package. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why you know when we first started talking, it was like, hey, let's haul out the dudes at Texas Speed. Let's do something you know cool and big. How much power are you thinking? I mean, that's a lot of tire back there, so I imagine you're trying to get over a thousand. We definitely want to be over a yeah. thousand. We would like to get close. Over fifteen hundred be better. Yeah, we'd like to be in the fifteen to two range. Okay. I mean, we really like I said, you know, we really want to stand out. We really want to make a statement when this thing shows up, and obviously the look of it already does. But it needs to have the sound and be able to just absolutely shred those 16 inch freaking tires on the ground. For sure, for sure. Y'all need this pretty soon or? Well, like everything we do at Gas Monkey, it's always yesterday. 2000 is possible, okay. but that would definitely require something custom and it's going to take some time. I mean, it wouldn't be anything that would be like super fast. You tell about this giant facility? Let me out, hear me out. Okay. So, um, that being said, uh, we do have something that could work for you that we can actually get put together pretty quick okay um, so we actually we started our brawler series of uh, short block engines not too long ago mm -hmm. um, and it's actually our in stock short block short, uh, program so we've actually got a bunch of short blocks that are on this on the shelf built ready to go really um, one in particular which we've dubbed the reaper uh, we've actually built that one uh, to where it's off the shelf ready to go for 1600 horsepower uses a dark block um, it's got a Compstar center counterweight to crank in it. Okay. Um, Cali's enforcer rods, and it's got some uh, forged pistons by Wiseco in it. Um, I mean, it's solid. Um, All there. Yeah. So yeah. we're talking about like 1600 reliable. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what we built it for. So um, we went a little bit over on my last one burnout. <laughs> no, we we'll 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we could use that as the base, build on top of it, okay. you know, have it ready a lot quicker than we could if we were building something custom for, you know, a lot more. But. I mean, I think as much as we wanted, you know, two, if they've got something for 16 here on the shelf and we can still make a deadline. What do you think? A couple of weeks to put that together? Yeah, more or less. Um, you know, a lot quicker than if we were doing a custom build for sure. Hmm. Well, I like I mean, the name. If that works, it works. What is it? The Reaper? The Reaper. The Reaper is what we Reaper. call it. Um, and an all black truck. We'd be like the double reaper. Kind of flows, yeah. kind of works. What's cool <laughs> about the block too is uh, it uses a dark block, which is already painted black. So, you know. Yeah, we're not going with anything but black, 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 black. Yeah. Black. No, yeah. We'll, we'll black mean, it out. This thing looks, we want it to look like a, a shadow <laughs> when you're standing across the room. Because black trucks matter. <laughs> they absolutely do. <laughs> Long burnout matter. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, anyways, um, well, super cool, man. We haven't seen this facility. Can we take a glance? Yeah, you haven't been here since our old shop, which, I mean, is literally next door, but this new one's a lot bigger, and uh, yeah. we've expanded a bit. So, yeah, I'm excited How many to show you. How you got now? Uh, gosh, I'd be lying if I remembered. But um, <laughs> A lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. It, it's it's twice the size of our other place. Rash. So Dude. I just can't count that high, so. I get it. Let's go yeah. check it out. Yeah, for sure. I know you saw the last place. Yeah. Um, for the most part, I mean, what we do hasn't really changed a lot. We just got a lot more machines, a lot more room than we used to. Over here, we have our cam grinders. We've got three now. The all top of the line Landis, really best you can get as far as the uh, cam grinding world goes. Over here, uh, this is where we work on all the blocks. The uh, Reaper that we keep on the shelf goes through the same process that all our others do. 
Um, all of our brawlers do, whether it's custom or not, is going to be running through all these machines. We've got our engine dyno. This is primarily for testing. This is how we test our parts, test our engines, do you know all the research and development before stuff actually hits the shelf and we send it out to the public. And going on over here, this is where we work on all the cylinder heads. So we have our aftermarket line of cylinder heads, but we also do uh, CNC porting on like customer supplied heads. We have our own brawler line of uh, cylinder heads too, which is uh, what's getting cut right here. All these machines here are just more that are cutting cylinder heads all day long. Uh, we do the valve jobs and everything here. Uh, over here, we actually cut our own titanium retainers, which is uh, pretty cool. Something that helps us keep the cost down on our uh, on our spring kits. But yeah, there you can see one's getting cut. That's crazy. And uh, out will pop these little guys. This is just uh, one of the many types of retainers that we use on and our it spring kits. It just sits here and does it until it runs out of metal. So yeah. Y'all are building everything in-house now. Um, we do a lot in-house. I mean, as much as we possibly can. So, um, a lot, a big thing with us cutting the titanium retainers is that titanium is very expensive, especially if you're getting a pre-cut retainer from another manufacturer. Um, it would make our spring kits way more expensive than if we were cutting them in-house. Uh, yeah. But yeah, these machines are fully automated. Uh, it's got a, an auto loader here where we just load it up with uh, these titanium bars. Oh yeah, it just kicks a new bar. That's yeah. Bad. So this is like a finished bar. This is just what's left over, but I mean, this would be like five or six feet wide. That's a whole piece of titanium. That's solid titanium. What? That we're cutting out of. Yeah, so pretty cool. Yeah, cool. So. <laughs> so it's just the scraps there. We do the uh, valve jobs right here. Five angle valve jobs on all of our cylinder heads, not the traditional three, so. This works a lot better that way. After all that machine work's done, uh, the guys go to work on assembling them. Put in the valves, um, install the springs. They run a pressure check to make sure there's no leaks or anything. And then it's off to get boxed and sent to the customer. So and here's the engine room. This is where we do all the assembly of the short blocks, long blocks, turnkeys. Super cool. It's the this clean room. A little quieter in here too. Yeah. yeah they got these, these guys got to work up to these jobs. <laughs> here where it's quiet, got their own TVs. Yeah, somewhat. Um, we've got Pope back here. He's been our engine builder for a long, long time. Yeah, now. cool. Yeah, he's the guy. So that's the Pope of engines here at Texas Speed. Absolutely. Yeah, he puts his blessing on all of them. There it is. <laughs> puts his ass on the line when he goes out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, uh, LS is traditionally what we've always done. We got into the Gen 5 LTs when those came out. Um, and uh, now we've branched into the Coyotes as well. So we're doing Coyote short blocks. We've got a line of those now too. Um, and uh, we offer some Hemi stuff as well. We're not doing the, the Hemi uh, builds yet, but we've got a lot of aftermarket stuff like cylinder heads and cam packages and stuff like that for the Hemis yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, we just slapped uh, some turbos on a brand new Challenger. It's a pretty rare car. They only make 200 of them with a six feet. So oh, nice. uh, we, we, we crammed some turbos on it and I'm going to go test drive it next week and check it out. Thank it should you, be a little bit more fun. Absolutely. That sounds like a good time. All right, man. You said you could make our time frame. That's all I needed to Absolutely. know. Yeah. And, uh, make it happen, dude. I appreciate it. Next time we'll be in here checking out the finished product and cramming it in the back of the truck and hauling ass to Dallas. Mm -hmm. yeah. But today is a leisurely cruise and I want some barbecue, so maybe we'll go down to Austin. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, man. into the booth for the uh, we're gonna poly it again and then uh, bring it back out block it one more time and then we go into primer with it so it's looking really good Well, who opened them? I don't know. Because it says real big. Right here. Atten Mike. I think you were supposed to open I don't it. know what Atten is, but it, Mike. You're Mike. I'm Mike. Yeah, these are... Dude. I just ordered these yesterday. It's pretty quick. Yeah, that's damn quick. Good, because we need them. 
we weren't sure what we were going to do. You know, we don't have wheels yet, but we know we needed some clearance. So we reached out to Mike over at Slosh Tubs. Um, he overnighted us a pair. So we're going to get these put in, and then we got to do some fender mods for uh, to make these fit. But I think these are going to solve all of our problems, and they're pretty nice. So thanks a lot, Mike. I opened them. happening we're about to spray some parts on our current SEMA build um, Richard's out of town when he gets back I'm hoping to have some things painted hopefully that'll put a little bit of a smile on his face and uh, gets us a little bit further along so we're gonna get in there and let's get some stuff painted hopefully we can get a lot painted before he gets back So the way this build's been going, I'm pretty sure we're probably painting it the wrong color right now. We'll see. It's green, right? No, it's black. I thought it was green. You said it was green. No, it's supposed to be black. <laughs> it was supposed to be green. No, it wasn't supposed to be green. Yes, it was supposed to be green metallic. Metallic Looking green. black now. So we got the chassis done, painted, and uh, bringing it over here to Josh so he can start putting it together. I still got a bunch of chassis components that I gotta do, but they at least can get started. What do you think? Listen, Mike. You are a lot in the shop 90% of the time. I try to but, be a lot all the time. But days like this, this is when I just, I love you, Mike. This <laughs> thing looks like, you, you took it to a powder coater. No, it looks good though, didn't it? It's that Emron 5000. You painted this. Actually, it's a new Emron. Back in the day, when I was like 20, we shot Emron 5000. It's when you all coated wood wheels? No, but it's, not, it's a single stage paint, oh. you know, which I don't use a lot, but I figured on this chassis it would probably work really good. So it's their their new Emron, but dude, on the trucks is that stuff is like bulletproof. No, like it, it gets stupid hard. It feels like a powder coat right now. Yeah, I thought you were bullshitting with me. Huh? Dude, no, it can, and it looks good. It looks phenomenal. Yeah. So it's ready to go. Yeah, yeah, we're ready to go. You can start uh, bolting on what you got. I do have the rear end in the booth okay. and the brackets for the. Uh, gas tank and a bunch mm -hmm. of like steering column crap and things like okay. that so let Might me the front end rolling at least yeah and then the cure time on this so if if, if it was to air dry is like 42 hours it's crazy but if i bake it it's two hours which a normal bake time is 30 minutes yeah okay so this stuff should be like really really hard so we might be able to get it on the ground on all fours Today. by the end of the day yeah. really yeah if i go yeah Fuck yeah Okay, so Will Wood really hooked us up, and I'm so happy about that because one thing when we're dealing with Will Wood, they send us everything we need to get right to work. What I'm doing right now is I'm getting ready to attach the hatch to the rotors. Uh, this truck is gonna make a lot of power, so like Richard said before, it's got a whole lot of go, we're gonna need a whole lot of woe. So, doing the big six piston caliper in the front, four in the rear, it's gonna have all kinds of power with our power brake system that we're running. Normally we do a manual, but on this truck, power brakes. So. This is gonna be an insanely good stopping truck.
just got a package in from our guys at Aeromotive and I can tell you I'm very excited about this. Um, this is a very high horsepower vehicle and most of the time when you do this you have a really loud external fuel pump to push it. Um, they have actually took our stock style tank and put one of the pumps that pushes 2,000 horsepower in it. So kind of pumped to see what it looks like. Uh, well, it's clean already. Look at that. Hold it, Kenny. It's a tight fit. <laughs> they got it all in there. Adam, I get it out. Damn it. There we go. We're going. We're going. Ooh, easy. Oh, no way, bro. Look at this. Damn, look at that. So this pump is actually made to be external. And they have turned around and made it go into their stealth tank. So this is badass, dude. So what type of pump is it? Is this yeah. a two-stage? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing so, right? Because normally you don't have the little wire there. So, well, I mean, for big boost, we're going to need the, the extra... The extra fuel, yeah. With the big injectors that we got? We ain't talking about those yet. Small injectors? <laughs> Huge. Huge. The dude, check it out. Gas Monkey. Custom spec. Exclusive. Exclusive? That's gangster. That's wow. Cool. This is really badass for us. We don't have a lot of room in this truck. It is a single cab short bed. So for this to be going back into the stock position is really exciting. I mean, we got this big giant drive shaft going in there. We're going to have four inch exhaust all the way out. I mean, saving as much room as possible is awesome. All right, so today we're test driving the uh, Swinger that uh, we installed the twin Helium turbos on. And the uh, coolest thing about this car is it has the ultimate and millennial theft deterrence. It's called a stick shift. It has six speeds and a clutch. So uh, if you're entering to win this car, you might practice up on your uh, driving skills with an actual clutch and a stick shift because it's a whole hell of a lot more fun. So there you go, one of only 200 Dodge Challenger Swinger Editions with a six-speed manual, and then Gas Muggy stuck some Hellion twin turbos on it. That thing is fun, fun to drive. So go to Gas Muggy Garage and find out how it can be yours. Right now, my girl says she's here with the surprise for the guys. Let's go check it out. So here is my wacky, crazy idea that I've been tempting the guys with, but I haven't told them anything because I don't know if it's gonna work. But you know, if you're building an OBS, it's real hard to stand out in the crowd. Sure, you can have one with a lot of motor, or have one that does uh, uh, autocross, or have one that does the drag race and pops wheelies, or have them low and slow, or have them big and tall, or whatever, but what do you do to really stand out in the OBS world? And uh, so I got to thinking, and I was like, what about a pano roof? Now, if this was a four-door truck, you know, like most uh, brand new ones, you could just take a pano roof out of the new one and stick it in the four-door, but this is a single cab. Uh, single cabs usually have like maybe a sunroof that pops open. It definitely doesn't retract back because it's got nowhere to go. So I'm thinking full pano roof. All the way back to the back window, all the way to the front windshield. Seamless, beautiful, nice. I had a, a, a lady down in Austin that I've heard about. She's done some really cool work on some really big SEMA projects and some really big show cars. And I told her what I wanted to do and she brought me some pieces and I got a test piece uh, I've got a really good piece and I've got a really good piece and uh, I drug in the old uh, cab. This isn't the actual the cab that we're using. This is uh, one we decided not to use out of like the six or so trucks we started with. But I want to see how it fits because we sit this cab down, had her pull a mold and uh, I just want to play with this before the guys get here and see what we think can happen. So we're tipping straight into the back windshield. Come across here and obviously we're gonna cut it to fit more. And we're right there with this. So 
the thought process is if I lay it in, we cut the metal, bend it, put a, another recess in there so that it can sink down into it. That's gonna give us the same ability as we have on this front windshield and the back windshield to just lay down a little bit of trim, a little bit of glue. Man, that could be rad. Just imagine being able to see through this. We got some busted cabs just sitting here. You don't see that? See something, but I'm confused about it. Oh, I told you I was working on something. Oh, and so I let the cat out of the bag. I got with a girl, uh, AM Hot Rod Glass down there, and I'm thinking pano roof. Okay, okay, okay. You know I have a full bodywork cab ready to go, ready for paint. Well, we had to make it perfect so that then we could cut it apart oh, to Jesus. put my glass roof on. Oh, we whack shit. it in straight lines along with the door and everything else. We drop in a ledge. And then you mount it just like you would a windshield with this glue. Man, I mean, you, I, I see it. I get what you're saying too, but I don't think it's gonna be like just that easy. Yeah, I definitely don't think it's gonna be just that easy. I don't know why you're worried about it. All you gotta do is cut this metal right here. Okay. Cut yeah. it out about an extra inch, bend it down and bend it back out at the width of this uh, glass and set it in its tray, glue okay. it down. What and then the, the truck's gonna be blacked out and then this is going to be really dark like that. What about the inside? Because this is a double layered roof, right? But it doesn't have supports. Well, I mean, well, we cut giant freaking sliding rags in all the mini trucks and stuff. All yeah, time. you used to cut all kinds of stuff in there, everything that didn't have any support. Like Cadillac tail lights. A Cadillac tail lights suck. <laughs> but I got a solution for that, that too. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Let's talk about pano roof. You ever uh, seen a pano roof on a single cab? I don't think I have at all. No. This is uh, it's pretty wild. Well, it, I mean, it goes up and meets the front windshield. No, it'll sit right in the same track as the front windshield. Damn. So, in theory, <laughs> and I like this part, once we have the dark one on and it's all black and the truck's going to be blacked out, it's just smoked in there. Wow, I think it's gonna be bitching. Yeah. Well, the trick is, can you do it? You can do anything. But Don't without leaking. Cause, without leaking, because we can't be rolling down like we used to, like you're talking about the mini trucking world, and you're inside your own truck with the with the roof up there that you cut in and wearing an umbrella while trying to drive. <laughs> it's good nine. weather at SEMA, I heard. <laughs> it fits pretty damn good. Yeah. And I like the, the test piece. This is a test piece, and I figured this is a test cat. Sure, that's why this one's in Yeah, now I get it. We just gotta cut it apart and see what we're looking at. So when we're done, honestly, it'll look like a brand new modern, like almost how the Tesla, the front windshield and the roof come together real clean. You just pissed him off. It's fine. You said it, no, it's not fine. You just made him mad. Tesla's just, last. You just made him mad. You call it a Tesla. <laughs> Way to go. Now I'm mad at you too. I'm gonna go over here. Looking at this skin here the way that it goes and we get over to here then we might be able to trim the bottom skin like this mm -hmm. and just fold it up and weld it and mount to what's left of that right here see how close it is oh and that's centers. about the distance of how thick that glass is I get what you're saying. so yeah. that's why i'm saying not just whack it let's take a look because we cut it over here close we can use this center part that looks like it's going to fit and then we just lift the outer parts okay and cut everything and trim it nice. Yeah. Make it look factory. So I got the top glass dropped down the end and me and Mike laid out a line to where the back glass goes up and meets. So now we got to get a special little rotary style saw. We're going to cut this, figure out when it sets in there where we need to cut the front, get it laid in here in the junk cab and then we'll move to the good cab.
here's the nerve-wracking part. We've got the A pillars and B pillars braced up. It's time to cut the inner structure out. Um, unlike the root skin, I feel like this is more of a one-shot go. So I think I have it to where we want to trim it. Um, I'm going to double-check a couple measurements, and then we're just going to blast the freaking thing out. Uh, once we get it out, we'll take and we'll box everything in, really like picture frame it, uh, and then figure out how deep we want to do uh, the, the glass in the top and figure out a shelf. So it's going to be a long progress process, not progress, but we're going to make a lot of progress. That's what I was going to do. the inner structure cut out I think I've got the place where I want it to land figured out now what I'm going to do is actually sheet all this in and box it and make it kind of you know a little bit stronger structure and then I have to build the lip for the glass to actually set on adhere to and give it you know strength on that also so I think we left enough meat in here to really give it a lot of structure still you know um, but I guess we'll find out when we put 2,000 horsepower to 16 inches of meat on the ground. Richard said if it blows the top out of it, that he'll be okay with it. So, kind of makes me not even want to glue it down and just see what his reaction is. Pick up the motor for the OBS, and I am more than stoked. Uh, this thing's ready to rock. Uh, we've got the Hellion turbo kits and everything back at the shop, and uh, we're gonna get this thing going, and it's gonna go fast. So get you some of this. So I know initially we talked, you know, and stuff, but I mean, lay it out. What's in here? I yeah, mean, what so gets us there? Like we talked about, um, we were going to use our uh, our Reaper short block, which is in our Brawler series. Um, it's actually a line of in stock engines that we keep on the shelf, um, which is why we were able to get this to you so quick because I knew you guys were in a time crunch and it ended up fitting perfectly. Quick. Yeah, um, it's rated for 1600 horsepower. Uh, uses a dart block, our TSP exclusive pistons through Wiseco, uh, Cali's extreme rods, and then it's got a Cali's center counterweighted crank too. So it's good for some RPM, um, good for the power. Uh, it's it's going to be good for up to 1600. We'll be rated it for. What did he say? <laughs> All the good stuff. All the good things. Yeah, y'all are talking All your own language things. back here. All, <laughs> you know, he just tells me what it costs, and I got to write the check. You know, but sure, uh, sure. no, super yeah. rad. I yeah, love it. No, and then it's got our PRC 285cc heads on it. It's okay. an it's an aftermarket head that we've designed. We've been using it for years. Um, it's an LS7 style. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got titanium intake valves. We've got Inconel exhaust valves, um, and it's a head that flows over 400 cfm. Uh, it's, it's the biggest head that we offer, and uh, you know, great for NA or for you know doing a boost build with a twin turbo setup like what you guys are using. Heck yeah. Yeah. So. And uh, yeah, awesome that Plasma Man got us this intake in time, um, coming from Australia. Um, it's, you know, billet, so again, having a billet intake's real nice when you're doing something boost, because it'll, uh, it'll take the power, no problem, so. Is that your own coils, too? Uh, no, these are uh, factory style coils, mm -hmm. um, like an LS2 style coil. Mm -hmm. uh, it is our uh, valve covers, and um, 
it's our uh, Texas Speed plug wires that we got on there. Okay, so, looks good. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, it's crazy, crazy. crazy. Yeah. So what size does it technically come out to? What are we looking? At? Uh, you've got a four. 434. Okay. Listen to the engine builder. He, uh, yeah, so 434. Um, it's uh, bigger than the traditional 427, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, on the bigger side of like what we usually do, but it's it's good for the power. Okay. So it started out as an LSX. Is this, did it start as a tall deck? No, this is a standard deck. Uh -huh. um, it's using a dart block. And, um, yeah, there's nothing uh, out of the ordinary with it for the most part, yeah. um, as far as like the dimensions go. But uh, yeah, so standard deck um, uses traditional stuff. Just uh, everything's beefed up a lot more. So hell yeah, I'm excited, man. Uh, I yeah. cannot wait to get this thing stabbed in on the turbos on it. I mean, I want to hear it. That's that's oh, that's man. the the bad <laughs> part right now. This is like having a Christmas present in front of you that you can't open yet. Mm -hmm having this and not being able to hear it yet. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to hear what this thing sounds like, dude. The cam too. Presents? One. Yeah. <laughs> the cam is a lot bigger than um, what you would be able to put into like a factory LS for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that is because, you know, you got your valve reliefs um, and everything is set up to where you got a lot more piston to valve clearance so we could put a lot bigger of a cam in there. Yeah. Um, so, but the cam is suited for boost. Um, it's going to be efficient with the twin turbos, but it's going to give you a lot of chop too. So it'll it'll sound That's good. Rad. It looks good. It's gonna fit really well with the whole overall truck that you got. That's awesome, dude! I can't wait to break some necks with this. Oh yeah, it'll be a head turner for sure. Just don't break yours. <laughs> Just make it hook it mine. Cool. Yeah, for real. <laughs> well, let's get this thing in a box and get in the back of the truck. I need it down here in two hours. Let's see if you can beat that on the way back. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Challenge. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Just like that, Liggety Split, Texas Speed, uh, just a two hour drive from Dallas and uh, we're on our way back, uh, truck's getting done and uh, now the most important piece of the puzzle is good to go.